Hey guys, today I'm going to do a gear load out of my Camera SF Predator 30. The Pred 30 is my go to day pack for day hiking in the mountains here in Wales. Let's get back to the rucksack shack because it's a bit windy here, in other words, my shed, and I'll show you what I carry. Now when we look at this kit, please bear in mind that this is, this is not for an overnighter. This is just for an average day hike in the mountains here in Wales. So anywhere from six to maybe 12, 14 hours, depending on the time of year. So there won't be a stove, there won't be a sleeping bag, and there certainly won't be a tent. All I carry on a day like this, hiking in the mountains, is the stuff that I'm actually going to need, the things that I may need in an emergency, and bearing in mind that an emergency may not involve me, it could be that I stumble across a situation where other people need help. So let's take a look at the kit. The first thing that I'll talk about, the first thing that I'll mention, is this, my possibles pouch. This is a Caramore SF. Uh, large utility pouch. I've got other videos where I talk about my possibles pouch in detail but in short it's the kind of stuff that I may need on an average day. So that could be stuff like a pen knife or multi-tool, a small amount of duct tape, uh, dog poo bags, multitude of loses for dog poo bags, uh, hand sanitizer, uh, what else goes in there, a little box of tissues, uh, not just for blowing your nose if you know what I mean, a very small and simple first aid kit including antihistamines, in this little pouch I also drop my wallet and keys for safekeeping and to make them easy to find. I usually also put in my mobile phone charger, you know one of these little power packs, and a spare battery for the camera. In the top flap of my pack, that's usually where I carry kind of your everyday type stuff, stuff that I'm going to grab quickly. So that focuses around my navigation kit and quick grab emergency gear. When I say navigation kit, what I really mean is just this, my GPS device. Uh, this one normally stays in the top flap of my pack. I use a, a compass um, and I use the Kamenga 3H. Uh, this sits in a little pouch on my hip, easy to find, easy to access. And also, the all essential glasses. There's no point having a map, a GPS or a compass if you can't actually see to read it. Also in the top flap, I always keep a head torch. I'm not a fan of carrying one head torch and a spare set of batteries because, well, try changing the batteries in a head torch when it's pitch black and raining. You know, go into the bathroom at night, turn the lights off, get in the shower, see how easy it is. So it's always easier to carry two head torches. Now I said this is really for a day hike, but when things go wrong, that you know, stuff can happen that can keep you on the mountain and you end up coming down late. So these are invaluable pieces of kit. And because the top flap is so easy to access, and I don't want a load of stuff in my pockets, I also carry my emergency whistle in the top flap of my pack. This is the hyper whistle. It's probably the loudest emergency whistle that I've ever come across. I'm not gonna go blow it because I'm in a, in a confined space. The recognised emergency signals, should you need to use it, is a six blasts followed by a one minute rest, another six blasts, and you repeat that until somebody finds you. Now there is a response, so if you're in the mountain, do you hear the six blasts of an emergency whistle? The internationally recognised response is that you reply with three blasts on your whistle. But there are two schools of thought on that. One is that if you give the three blasts, if you're the person waiting for help and you're having a, a kind of a gradual decline and your mindset's gone, it might just give you enough of a, a motivational boost to keep going. On the other hand, it could be that if you blow your whistle three times, the person that's looking for help, that's in distress, may decide or may think that they've been found and it's easy, but it's not because it's really difficult to find somebody in open spaces, wide open spaces, particularly in adverse weather conditions and even more particularly at night. Personally, I'd probably err on the side of not replying to the emergency blasts. Let them keep blowing, they're going to be easier to find. If you blow it three times and they think they're found and just relax, it's going to be nigh on impossible to find somebody, or it could be. I've also started carrying this little light emitting gadget. It's really cool, but I'm going to cover that in a whole other video that I'm yet to make. I'll drop a link to the web page for this in the description, and when I've made the other video, then I'll drop a link to the video in the description too. Now, if you follow me on any of my socials, I'm explored just everywhere, so Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, uh, Facebook, the whole lot, um, you'll know that I'm always banging on about taking responsibility for your own safety. 
And bearing that in mind, because I spend so much time here in Snowdonia, up in the mountains on my own, people often don't know uh, exactly where I am or even roughly where I am. Uh, I'm seriously considering buying a Garmin inReach or very similar device so that I've got that emergency backup if I ever need it. I've used similar devices many times before. Everything that I do, all of my adventures, challenges and expeditions connect with schools all over the world, uh, all around the globe. And what I often do is have one of these trackers linked to a live tracking site page so that kids in classrooms all around the globe can follow my expeditions as I'm doing them. So it really is bringing the world to life in classrooms everywhere. As an example, a few years ago, I did a kind of world first on a paddleboard, you know, paddleboarding around icebergs and that kind of stuff off the coast of Greenland. Um, it was good fun and we had a, a live tracking page, so I was carrying a tracker, we had a live tracking page and the little kind of icon was a polar bear stood on a paddleboard. So kids in schools everywhere could follow our progress and then we backed it up with loads of learning activities. Now if you've already got a Predator 30 or you've watched my video on the Predator 30, I don't know why I'm pointing that way because it's probably down below in the description, uh, you'll know that against the back panel is an elasticated pouch. That pouch was really intended to hold a hydration bladder, but I don't really enjoy using hydration bladders, so I tend to use it as a, as a stuff pouch for other stuff. If I'm not actually carrying a map, or it's not in the pocket of my jacket because I don't need it, then it lives in that little stuff pouch. My right in the rain Waterproof notepad and pen also live in that pouch. I always carry one of these things. They're absolutely invaluable, especially if you need to make navigation notes and especially if you need to make navigation notes because suddenly you find yourself in adverse weather conditions. My Blizzard survival bag also sits in this pouch. These things are absolutely superb and I never travel anywhere without one. The last time I used one was during a rescue in Arctic Norway and it really did, I believe it really did, make a huge difference in the condition of the casualty when we handed him over to emergency services. I also drop in my other head torch so it's easy to find and I stuff the top with this, my Camera SF rucksack rain cover. And everything else just goes into the main compartment. Now obviously there is an order to the way that I pack my rucksack or backpack or pack or whatever you want to call it, uh, but right now we'll talk about the kit in no particular order. I carry my water in a one litre Nalteen container. I usually find that one litre is plenty in most weather conditions, but if it's really going to be hot or if I'm going to be out from dawn to dusk in midsummer when it's going to be a longer day, I do carry a bit more. When it's really cold or very wet, I'll often carry a small flask of hot water and if I do, then I also carry a cup and within that is usually a couple of sachets of coffee or hot chocolate or soup or whatever. I never carry anything in my flask apart from hot water. I do carry a sit mat. This is for, for when I'm taking a break mostly. Um, I found this one in a charity shop. It's a little concertina version. It's quite small and lightweight, just big enough for my bum. They're not essential, but they do make life a lot more comfortable. And if you've got one, you can use them to help insulate casualties from the ground if you come across somebody that needs that. Uh, you don't need to buy a purpose-built one if you don't need to, if you don't want to rather. You can use a, an off-cut from an old sleeping mat or an old yoga mat or whatever. When I'm hiking, I don't usually bother with too much food, so I normally only carry a couple of flapjack bars like this, either shop-bought like these or homemade, but I always make sure that I've got enough calories to share with anyone that I come across who may need them. I always carry this. This is a, uh, this is a four to six person bothy bag or emergency shelter, group shelter, whatever name you want to give it. They do take up a bit of room and they do carry a little bit of weight, but they are absolutely invaluable. I've used them in emergency situations to protect casualties from the elements from the weather, but I've also used them for those all important morale boosting team meetings when you're out in wild open spaces in adverse weather conditions, when it's hoofing down with rain, you wanna have a coffee break together, you wanna to talk about navigation, route planning, whatever, get inside one of those, put a pole up, it's like a whole new world. I've also used them many times on Arctic expeditions. My colleagues and I would kind of circle the pulks to create seats, whip the cover over, sit on it, put a ski pole in the middle to give it a bit of loft, uh, and then we can hide in there from the elements, have a cup of coffee, talk about whatever we, we want to talk about, the route ahead, how we're doing, what our objectives and goals are, whatever it happens to be. And then once we've, we've kind of finished that, we never stop for more than kind of 10, maybe 15 minutes at the absolute outside, then it's time to, to take that off, stopping jackets off uh, and uh, make progress once again. It's only a brief respite, but sometimes it's just so welcome. If I'm not wearing it, 
I still always carry a waterproof jacket, even if I'm not expecting rain. Waterproof jackets are great insulation from the weather, the rain and the wind. I guess we've all got different favourites, but this is mine. It's from Rowan Clothing. It's probably the most water resistant jacket that I've ever had, particularly given that it's quite lightweight and it's ease of movement. You know, it's like fluid on the skin. I like the pockets. They're plenty deep enough for holding a folded alternate survey map and anything else that I want to carry. Personally, I don't like wearing waterproof over trousers, so I never wear them and I never carry them. I do, however, wear gaiters. This Camera SF pack, the Predator 30, is made with durable water repellent material. So there's already a level of protection for the kit inside. And I did mention earlier that I always carry a Camera SF rain cover for additional protection. But if I'm gonna be out and I know that it's going to be absolutely hoofing down with rain, I line the entire inside of my pack with a large Camera SF dry bag and dump all of my kit inside there. That way I know that no water's going to get through. Now you might find this a bit odd, but in many of my images that I post online, you'll see that there's an umbrella strapped to the side of my pack. When it's raining, I don't actually walk with the brolly up, but when I stop, I do put it up. If I want to stop to, to do a quick navigation check or to, to have a reality check or to have a quick drink or whatever, being able to put the brolly up and just give yourself a bit of respite from, from that rain is such a game changer. When it's cold, an umbrella can be used as a windbreak or a breeze break to create your own kind of microclimate. So imagine you sat on your sit mat, you've got a stopping jacket on, your brolly's up creating a bit of a windbreak or a breeze break and you've got a mug of steaming hot chocolate. In extreme heat, and I have used this in deserts, it can create much needed and very welcome shade. I've even used an umbrella, a brolly as a quick shelter to sleep under, along with a bivy bag. The night this picture was taken, I was alongside the river Danube. It did rain a little, but I slept right through and only realized in the morning when I saw that the ground was very wet, that it did actually rain. This particular umbrella is ridiculously robust. The shaft is pretty much unbreakable. In fact, I weigh kind of 13 and a bit stone. I stretched it across two chairs and sat on it. Is there anything that you carry that I don't? Or is there anything that I've said that I carry that you've never thought of carrying? Drop a comment and let me know. That's the end of the video. Thank you very much for tuning in. As always, be good, be brilliant, be awesome. And remember, if I can help you in any way, get in touch, let's have a conversation and make good stuff happen.